Assalamualaikum and hi to everyone. Thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we continue on another chapter that will discuss about the man memory. So in this video, we will discuss about the background, the swapping, what is the process of swapping, and the contiguous memory location. So the next video we will. Uh, learn about the segmentation and aging. So, for this chapter, you should learn about the various ways of organizing memory hardware, function F memory uh, management units MMU, and then we also will discuss the various memory management techniques, include in the paging and segmentation when we learn about the memory okay we learn about the addresses you should know what are the addresses how the address work in the memory of computers basically when we talk about the address number of address is continuous numbers contiguous okay zero one two three four until the end so the number must be in a sequence. So the first question that you should able to answer is about the main memory is volatile or okay, we have main memory and we also have the secondary memory. So what we can categorize the memory, either it is volatile or non volatile time so we go for the background okay. this one is referred to the operating system and man uh, memory management units so program must be brought from this into memory and placed within a process for it to be run so when we bring a program or a process into memory we need to allocate the memory into the addresses and then after that we can execute that program or process main memory and register are only storage cpu can access directly that means we have the computer and inside our computer we have the cpu okay, this cpu units can only uh, access the main memory and register directly okay, is quite different compared to the, the secondary uh, memory so you need to remember that a cpu only can access direct to the main memory and register and i hope Throughout the semester, you should know what is the memory and what is the register. Register also a part of memory. I believe if you already took uh, ITT for two zero digital uh, electronic, you all also learn about the registers. So register is a part of memory, and we can also find the register in our a calculator that hold the value that we when we enter the key that on our uh, calculator so we have to find main memory and registers in memory units only sees a stream of addresses plus read request or address plus data and write request so when we talk about the memory we also link to the address because memory have the address so when we perform any things like read or write a request it will combine with the addresses the memory a register access in one cpu clock or less 
Your yeah, memory can take mini cycle causing a stall. A mini cycle of main memory will cause a stall. Uh, CP, uh, for registers only access one. And cache sits between the allocation or the location of the cache is between the memory, between the main memory and the CPU register. And protection of the memory required to ensure that the correct operation of our computer system. In memory, we have the bees and we have the limit. Okay. So bees and limit register means that uh, the 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 range. Okay, the range. So a pair of a base and limit register define a logical address space. A logical address space refer to the size of the address. So CPU must check every memory access generated in user mode. Okay, this one under the user mode is not a kernel mode. To be sure, it is between the piece and the limit for that user. Okay, so this example of our memory is not our memory; it's about the computer memory. Okay, about the main memory. So basically, in main memory, we have the space that allocate for the operating system. You can check your phone. You can check your computer. Even we said that. The, the the storage is one tera uh, gig or five one two gig. The yes. new computer still uh have less compared to the what written in the uh, advertisement because of the operating system already allocated in your uh, computer system and the your phones. So this is the RSS. Okay, as addresses of your memory. Okay, let's say you have process one, process two, process three, and process. Uh, you have three processes. Okay, and then we have the base and limit at here. Basically, it's just like the lower limit, and then we have the upper limit, lower limit, and upper limit. So this one is the limit register. So between here to here so this is the, the base and the limit register so ROA address protection is based on the base and the limit register so it's based on this uh f and if else okay so base base plus limit so this one is cpu so cpu address it will check either it's bigger or equal to the base okay if yes a bigger or equal to the base then it will check again either it is lesser than the base limit if yes then it will go to the memory otherwise it will trap to the operating system monitor addressing so this one is address uh, of the memory memory address here so this is uh, the protection part uh, that we talk here protection memory required to ensure the correct operation the next part is about the address binding program on this ready to be brought into memory execute from an input queue so without support must be loaded into address 000, 000 means at the initial part okay inconvenient to have first user process physical address always at zero 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 okay. but the address represented in different way at different stages of a program life okay so code addresses usually a symbolic and compile code address bind to relocatable the addresses so we have the address bind here from the source code to the relocatable address let's say here we have 14 byte from beginning of this module so linker or loader will bind the relocatable address to absolute addresses 74014 and each binding map one address space to another the process of bind and then will map again so binding of instruction and data to the memory 
So address binding of instruction and data to memory addresses can happen at three different stages. Okay, the process of binding uh, and then from address bind go to the data to go to the memory address. We have three stages. The first stage at the compile time. Okay. From the previous slide, okay, you look at the source code. We have the source code as uh, use the address. This so in the source code, the address is usually a symbol link. So we will use the address binding in order to re uh, to allocate to the memory. So we have the compile time stage. If memory location known a priori, so absolute code can be generated. And must recompile code if starting location changes. So this one at the compile time. The second stage at the load time. Okay, must generate relocatable code if memory location is not known at the compile time. Okay, if we can't find at this part, it must generate at this part. The next stage at the execution time. So binding delayed until runtime if the process can be moved during its execution from one memory segment to another memory segment. So in order to do this best part, we need to hardware support for this address map. Okay. So uh, the hardware support is based on the base and limit register that we already discussed before. So address binding is another term that you should know that uh, it is about the process of mapping from a logic uh, from the logical address or visual address to the corresponding physical address in the main memory. Okay, so address binding is a process of mapping. So uh, this process is controlled and managed by the MMU. It's not multimedia university, but it's about the memory management units. So memory management units is the units that will instruct or will uh, control or manage the process of mapping from the logical address to the physical address. Okay. So that is a, a part of the address binding mapping the addresses. Okay, here are the multi steps processing of a user program. So basically, at the, the above part here is about the uh, using the logical address, and the below here is using the uh, physical address. So logical address are same during the compile time and load. And physical addresses are differ in execution time address binding scheme. So you can refer here, we have the source program. This one is your source code. And then we use the compiler or the assembler. Depends on what kind of the code we want to uh, interpret here. So this part we call as the compile time from the source code, uh, compiler, compiling or assembling using the compiler or assembler. This one we call as the compile time. So at this time, if the memory location known a priori, absolute code can be generated. Okay, and then we must recompile code if starting location changes. So this part at the compile time and then after compile it become the object module and other object module will linkage to the editor so linkage and then load module go to the loader become a system library to the loader so this part we call as the load time okay In the previous slide we have three stages okay so we have compile we have load and we have the execution time which refer to the runtime. So after load, uh, we go to in memory binary memory image. So this part we have dynamically loaded system library, and we have another term dynamic linking. So at this execution time, binding delay until runtime is 
the process can be moved during its execution from one memory segment to another memory segment. So at this stage is referred to the logical, at this part is referred to the physical. So these are the processing or the steps that uh, a program will go through our in the computer memory is not in our memory is in the computer memory okay next look at the logical versus physical rsps okay. logical refer to the visual okay the concept of logical space that is bound to a spread physical space is central to proper memory management okay. logical address is generated by the cpu and physical address is seen by the memory units that are uh, the difference between the logical and the physical address logical and physical address are the same in the compile time and the load time uh, but different difference in the execution time you can refer back to the Previous slide on the multi step processing. Okay, logical address space is set of all logical addresses that generated by a user program. And physical address space is a set of all physical addresses that generated by a program. So, generated by a program, but one is the visual, another one is the physical part. Okay, next we go for the memory needs okay, you already know that one of the tasks of the mmu is to do the map from the logical to the physical so these units is a hardware device that run time that at runtime map visual to the physical address Many methods possible cover in the rest of the chapter later on. Okay. To start, consider the simple scheme where the value in the relocation register is added to every address generated by a user process at the time is sent to the memory. So we have the best register called as relocation register for MDOS on Intel x uh, 80 times 86 this one this type of uh, intel use for relocation register so different hardware have different um, relocation registers depends on the hardware that our computer use so the user program will deal with the logical addresses it never sees the real physical addresses so program that we create only deals with the logical address so execution time binding occur when the reference is made to location in the memory and logical address bound to physical addresses so what is the binding process okay the next part we go for the dynamic relocation using relocation register so here we have the cpu Okay, the CPU, the MMU, and the memory. So CPU provide the logical address, and then the management memory units will map with the physical address and store to the memory of computer. So by routine, it is not loaded until it is called. And better memory space utilization unused routine is never loaded all routine came on the disk in really relocatable load format and useful when large amount of code are needed to handle infrequently occurring cases this one is for the dynamic relocation and no special spot from the operating system is required so the process of implementation is through the program itself and OS just help by providing the libraries to implement the dynamic loading. 
Okay, the next part is dynamic linking. We already meet the term of dynamic linking in the multi-step process. Okay, we have static linking and we have dynamic linking. Static means it's static. In a static linking, system libraries and program code is combined together by the loader. And then it will uh, generate the binary program image. That is the static linking. In dynamic linking, the linking part is postponed until the execution time. Okay, if you refer back to the slide that show the multi-step process, the dynamic linking happen at the execution time. A small piece of code stop used to allocate the appropriate memory resident library routine. Okay, the, that stop will replace itself with address of the routine and execute the routine. Operating system will check if the routine is in a process memory address. If not, the address space in the if not in the address space, so it will add to the address space. The dynamic linking is particularly useful for the libraries. The system also known as a shared libraries and consider applicability to patching system libraries. So the, uh, here uh, versioning may be different. Different version have different implementation. So until this point, you should be able to answer this kind of question. What is the function of memory units in the operating system? Okay, the next part we go for swapping. This one is not a swap test, it's about the swapping. Swapping is a process of move from one to another, move to inside, move to the outside, okay, something like that, temporarily. Okay, swapping is a process that be that can be swapped temporarily, temporarily, this one is the keyword, out of the memory to a backing store, from the uh, main memory to backing store or to the secondary memory, and it will brought back into the memory for continue the execution process. So total physical memory space of the process can be exceed the physical memories. Okay. Ah. Here we have the term backing store. Okay, backing store. So what is the backing store? So backing store is referred to the fast disk large enough to accommodate copies of all memory images for all users must provide direct access to these memory images. Let's say we have CPU, we have the main memory, and then we have the back store. And then another term is roll out and roll in. Swapping variant we use for priority based scheduling algorithm. So this one is referred to the priority scheduling algorithm that we already learned in the previous chapters. A lower priority process is swap out so higher priority process can be loaded and executed so why we need uh, the process of swapping because we want to give the priority to higher pro priority process so the process can swap and swap in and swap back roll in and roll out so major part of swap time is transfer time so when you uh, try to swap from a memory to the back store from the back store to the memory bag so it will have the transfer time needed okay there's uh, several time are needed period of time needed in order to transfer the whole part into the back store and transfer back from the back store to the memory so total transfer time is directly proportional to the amount of memory swap the system will maintain a ready queue of a ready to run process which have memory image on the disk so basically swap is the process temporarily swap from the main memory to the back store and from back store to the 
main memory in order to execute it. Okay, the question here, does the swap out process need to swap back in the same physical address? Is it necessary or not? Okay, so it depends on the address binding methods that we have learned before. And it also need to consider the input and output from the process memory space. Okay, another version of the OS like Unix, Linux and Windows. This one is a modified version of swapping. I found in this, that kind of operating system. So in the modified version, swapping normally disabled and started if more than threshold amount of the memory allocated. Only started if we have a threshold amount of the memory. And disable again once the memory demand reduced below the threshold. This one is under the modified version of the operating system. Okay. Schematic view of the swapping. Okay, we have the main memory here and we have the backing store here. So the process of swap out means swap from the main memory to the back store and process of the swap in is from the back store to the uh, main memory. Okay, the next part we will learn about the contiguous location. Uh, under this part, uh, we also have another term that we call as fragmentation. Okay, contiguous allocations. Main memory must support both the OS and the user processes. Limit resource must allocate efficiently. Okay, this one is the process of allocation, the resources that we have in our computer system. Contiguous allocation is one of the early methods that we can use. Main memory usually uh, into two partitions. The first part is resident operating system. So this resident operating system usually held in the low memory with interrupt vector. And another part, we have the user processes uh, in the high memory. So each process content in single contiguous section of memory. Okay, for relocation register, it used to protect the user process from each other. Okay, we ha may have multiple processes in our system. So we use the relocation register to protect the user process. Okay, to protect from changing the operating system code and data. So we have the base register. This one contains the value of smallest physical address that we have discussed before, base and limit register. Contain the range of logical addresses and each logical address must be less than the limit register. And then we have the memory management units. So this MMU will map the logical address dynamically to the physical address and can then allow the actions such as kernel code being transient and kernel changing fast. So the relocation and limit register quite similar like the previous one we have the cpu cpu uh, uh, provide the logic address and then you will check with the register uh, limit register okay base uh, is less then go for the relocation register and then physical address will go to the memory otherwise it will say that addressing error so similar like the base and base limit before. Okay. The next one is about the multiple partition allocation. Okay. Multiple partition allocations. We have degree of multi-programming limited by number of partition. At here we have multi-programming. So we have numbers of partitions. So variable partition size for efficiency, size to a given process needs. Yeah, when we learn about the scheduling, we should know about the time and we should know the burst time and the uh, arrival time. Okay. At this part is about the size. 
such that a process need in order to be executed the size of program and the size of uh, memory that we have okay another term is whole whole is the block of available memory and whole of various size are scattered throughout the memory means that when we talk about the whole in our memory it is a memory that being blocked by being used okay and when a process arrives it is a located memory from a whole large enough to accommodate it and process exiting freeze its partition adjacent free partition is combined and operating system maintain information about the allocated partition and free partition which is referred to the whole okay you can refer to this figure this one is our uh, the computer memory okay computer memory computer memory computer memory so we have process 5 process 8 and process 2 okay after process 8 done so we have whole here the free memory here located process y process 8 done process 2 done okay if we have another process let's say process 9 and process 9 uh, can uh, this size of memory available here suitable for process 9 so process 9 will uh, come to the memory and then we have another part so we will add another process 10 if this uh, size of memory uh, suitable or large enough for process 10 so process 10 can goes in so this part we call as the whole uh, this part is the variable partition okay so now we have the allocation algorithm so there are three allocation algorithm that we can use in order to satisfy the request of size n from a list of free holes okay we free holes mean that space in our memory so to satisfy the request of n uh, power processes we can use the allocation algorithm so the first allocation algorithm is first fit first fit means allocate the first hole that is big enough second method our second algorithm is the best fit so in the face in the base fit allocate it will allocate the smallest hole that is big enough Okay, so it must search to entire list and unlist ordered by. So by using the base feed, it will produce smallest leftover hole. And then we have the worst feed. So worst feed allocate the largest hole and also must search the entire list. But it will produce the largest leftover hole. So first fit and the best fit is better, are better compared to the worst fit in terms of the speed and the storage utilization. So these are the algorithm that we can use for allocation, the process to the memory. Okay, and the next term is the fragmentation. Okay. Fragmentation means we divide into the chunk. And we can define this kind of terms different and diff in different area. So in network, we also have the term the fragmentation of the address. In OS, we also have the term of fragmentation. So what is the fragmentation? Uh, what is the fragmentation? Okay, fragmentation usually occurs when memory is allocated contiguously in the system contiguously means continuous or sequence 0 1 2 3 
it cannot be 0, 1, 2 and it jumps to number 8 and number 9. Cannot. Okay. So, different file. Uh, different file that we have are store, stored in the memory as a chunk. Yeah, it's chunk. It's not the the whole part, but in a chunk, in in, in the form of chunk, in our mem in the computer memory. So when those file mod being modified or deleted, yeah, we have file that store in the memory. So let's say when the file is uh, modify the size of file will be changed right as well as when the file is deleted okay so we have a free uh, part in our in the computer memory so the gaps and free space are left in uh, between of the uh, memory Com computer memory main memory and this part we call as the fragmentation so fragmentation is referred to the uh, free space in computer memory uh, so we have two term the first part is the external fragmentation and the second term is the internal fragmentation so external fra uh, fragmentation is refer to the total memory space exists to satisfy a request, but it's not contiguous. It's not contiguous. Internal fragmentations refer to the allocated memory may be slightly larger than requested memory. So these sites different in memory internal to a partition but not being used so both are not being used okay how to relate this kind of fragmentation occurs in our daily time okay let's say you want uh, you want to go to get a services to the post office okay for example so you need to queue okay the process of queuing the process of queuing may take one or two hours of your time so during the queue time you cannot go to a shopping mall for that for example so that that time one to two hours is uh, the fragmentation we call it as the fragmentation hours okay first speed analysis reveals that when given n blocks allocated so 0.5 n block lost to the fragmentation one over three may be unusable unusable and more than 50 percent rules okay so reduce external fragmentation by compaction Okay, shuffle memory content to place all the free memory together in one large block and uh, compaction is possible only if relocation is dynamic and is done at the execution time yeah we can reduce the external fragmentation using the compaction okay input output problem less job in memory while it is involved in the input and output okay do input output only into the os buffers and now consider that backing store has same fragmentation problem so end of the first part so hopefully you able to understand the the, the terms that we use in the uh, memory part for part one we learn about the uh, address binding okay we learn about the dynamic linking we learn about the fragmentation swapping uh, so we will continue for second point on the next video thank you and assalamualaikum